The mole is a unit of quantity. At first, it seems really funny to have a unit of quantity. We're really familiar with having units for things like length, volume, mass, but to have a unit of quantity seems really weird at first until you realize that we actually have everyday examples of units of quantity that you probably use on a regular basis. For example, pair is an everyday example of a unit of quantity. The word pair, we all know, means that we have two objects. If you have a pair of shoes, that means that you have two shoes. Also, another unit of quantity that we use on a regular basis is the dozen. If you have a dozen eggs, that means that you have 12 eggs. If you have a dozen donuts, you have 12 donuts. So both of these are examples of units of quantity where the word pair is used to represent two things and the word dozen means that we have 12 things. And along those lines, mole is just the same idea. In fact, there really isn't any difference between the concept of the pair, the dozen, or the mole. They all really represent the same thing. The only way that the mole is unique is that we don't use it in everyday, um, everyday use. And the reason for that is because the mole represents a ridiculous quantity. The mole represents 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd objects. So that's a really enormous number. Like that's a massive number. And we would never have a mole of donuts or a mole of shoes or a mole of cats. So it wouldn't make sense for us to use this word every day. But it isn't any different from pair or dozen. Now, in terms of using the mole mathematically, we would use it exactly the same way that we would use the words pair or dozen. So say, for example, Let's say that I am telling you that I have 10 pairs of shoes. And I'm asking you, if I have 10 pairs of shoes, how many shoes do I actually have? Well, right off the top of your head, you say 20. You just know that it's 20. But the math that you're doing in your head is saying that we have 10 pairs and each pair represents two shoes. There are two shoes per pair. So we're just doing 10 times two, 20 shoes. Now you might be saying, why do you have to make it so complicated? We all know that 10 pairs of shoes is just 20 shoes. We all know 10 times two, and that's how we get 20 shoes. But just sit with me, because this is gonna be useful. Like, what if I said uh, that I have five dozen donuts? And I'm asking you to determine how many donuts do I actually have if I have five dozen? Well, again, the same kind of thing, you know, five times 12. What is the math that we're doing there? Five dozen donuts. And we all know that there are 12 donuts in a dozen. So to figure out how many donuts there are, we're just going to multiply five times 12. And again, you might still be saying, I don't understand why we have to make this so complicated because everybody knows it's just going to be 5 times 12. That's how many donuts we have. Well, now let's take it into something that's more related to chemistry. So let's say that we have 6 moles of gold atoms. And we want to know how many atoms there are in, in 6 moles. We're going to do the same kind of thing. We're going to say that we have six moles of gold atoms, and every mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in a mole. Now we're going to do a lot of math there with our calculator, and we're going to get an answer. Let's go ahead and do the math on that. Six times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, 3.6 times 10 to the 24th atoms. 
And it doesn't have to only apply to atoms. I mean, I could have just as well said that I have six moles of cats and how many cats is that? And the answer still would have been exactly the same. So when it comes to doing conversions with the mole, when you're given a quantity with a unit of mole and asked to figure out how many individual items you have, you're gonna treat that problem the same way that you would treat pairs of shoes or dozens of donuts. And you're going to use this conversion factor to help you figure out how many actual items you have.